Turn your Bibles to the Great Commission. That would be found in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. This has been called the Great Commission for many, many years. You can simplify it by calling it our marching orders as a church, as the people of God. This is what we're commanded to do. This is our mission, if you will. And we will pick up in verse 16, where Jesus has just risen from the grave in resurrection power. He's met that with the disciples' son. And then he meets with them again in verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And a little bit later, Jesus came and he spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach, literally make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, the end of the age. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now, when Jesus was raised from the grave in resurrection power, he continued to minister to his followers for over 40 days. The scripture reveals 10 post-resurrection experiences. So Jesus continued to teach them. He continued to equip them. There is some things that he needed to deal with Peter and the other uh, ten with, and he dealt with those things. You remember Peter took a bunch and went fishing, and Jesus went out and met him on the beach. And he restored them, and he blessed them. A little bit later, he met them in the mount in Galilee. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 6, it says that over 500 people were there. And they witnessed with their own eyes the resurrected living Lord Jesus. And he continued to teach them and he continued to minister to them. And so there was a great host of people in verse 16. And 1 Corinthians 15, 6 reveals 500 people at one time who saw Jesus. But then, a little bit later, he spoke this passage. And right before he ascended back to heaven, Jesus gave them a commission. It's called the Great Commission. He gave them a responsibility as the people of God. This is literally our marching orders as a church. This is what we are about. Yes, we're here to worship. We're here to grow. We're here to grow as disciples. But... And as far as our mission and our purpose, it is to glorify God by reaching other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so we need to renew this commission this morning. We need to review it and see what the Lord has to say to us and challenge us a little bit. First, we are to go forth. Say that with me. To go forth. He says in verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Anytime you have a therefore, you need to ask the question, what is therefore, therefore? What is the therefore, therefore? Well, therefore refers to what came before. What came before the words therefore in this context? Jesus made this statement. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power. All authority is given unto me in, in heaven and in earth. When Jesus rose from that grave in resurrection power, he validated his claim to be the Son of God and the Savior of the world. He finished the mission and the work that God gave him to do in providing salvation for mankind. And on the basis that he has finished that work, on the basis that he is the Son of God, on the basis there is a provision in place so that humanity can be saved if they choose to be saved. On that basis, he said, all power and authority has been given unto me. And now I am delegating some of that power to you. I am commissioning you and giving some of that power and authority to you 
for you to go forth. The question is, is where are they to go? What does your text say? It says that you are to go therefore unto the nations. You're go, you are to go unto all the people groups of the world. Red, yellow, black, or white, we are all precious in God's sight. 2 Peter 2.9, uh, 2 Peter, uh, Peter 3.19 says, It is not God's will that any of us should perish, but all should come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, God wants us to go. Go to the nations. Go to your family members. Go to your relatives. Go to your friends. Go where you have a hearing among people. Everybody won't receive you, but somebody, many people will, and we are to go and tell them about the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If you go to the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, the Old Testament, and you make your way through all the way to the book of Revelation, you will discover this simple thought, that God and His people are a going people. We are a going people. God told Abraham to go in Genesis chapter 12. He told Abraham, I want you to leave your father and your father's house. And I want you to leave your land. And I want you to go to a place where I'm going to point out to you a little bit later. And the book of Hebrews tells us that Abraham went out not knowing where he went. But he became obedient to the call of God to go. And he eventually wound up in the promised land of Canaan for the people of God. Amen? Amen? We have Moses who comes a little bit later. God met him in a burning bush experience. And God told Moses, I want you to go to Egypt and deliver my people from Egyptian bondage. I want you to bring them out in power. Well, Moses struggled with that call for a good while, but he finally surrendered to it, and he went to Egypt, he and his brother, and they brought the people of God out in victory and in power. God turned to his son, Jesus, in heaven and said, I want you to go save my people from their sin. And God sent forth his son, made of a woman, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the curse of the law that we might receive the adoption of sons in Jesus Christ, that we might be forgiven. In John 20, 21, Jesus said, As my Father has sent me, so send I you. Our mission is to go and to share with others what Jesus can do for them and saving them from the penalty of their sin and delivering them from the power, the grip, and the force of sin in their life. Amen? Amen. So as we review the commission, our <clears throat> marching orders, we are to simply go forth. And sometimes that means to the person that's in their family. Sometimes that means next door. Sometimes it might be a relative. But we are to go. Amen. There is a cute little Disney movie called The Incredibles. Anybody ever seen that? I've seen it four or five times when my grandchildren were a lot younger. They we used to watch this all the time. This was a uh, family here that had incredible uh, abilities and power. They had incre incredible abilities and power. And they were a crime-fighting family. And they went around trying to save people from evil and trying to save people from destruction. They were a crime-fighting family. Do you know in a similar way, the people of God are a sin-fighting family? <laughs> That's right. We have been given an incredible gift in forgiveness. We have been given an incredible power in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit to deliver us from the power, the grip, and the force of sin. And as we grow and mature in that and uh, experience that victory, we need to be all about sharing that power and that forgiveness and that deliverance with other people. Amen? Amen. We need to be delivered from the penalty of our sins. Yes. And when we pray and we ask Jesus to come into our heart and our lives, and we mean it, and we humble ourselves, and we turn from our sin and our sin, He will immediately deliver us 
from the penalty of our sins. He will declare us justified in the sight of God through what Christ has done for us. But he will also deliver us from the power, the grip, and the force of sin in our lives. But that is a process. As you grow in his grace and grow in his power, he delivers us more and more. We may not be like these incredibles, but we are instruments of righteousness for God. And did you know that the New Testament even used those words to describe us and what has happened to us? He says in Romans 6, 13, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. God can use us of, as instruments of righteousness to share the good news of the gospel with other people and see that they're forgiven for their sins, but also help them be delivered from the power, the grip, and the force of sin in their lives. Hallelujah. Some people need more help than others about that deliverance business. And there's whole ministries. This brother right over here heads up a ministry and is a part of the ministry. Uh, for addictions. There's people all over this place who have been delivered from all kinds of issues, drugs, alcohol, and many other things. But it's because of the power of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? Amen. We need to go forth. As my Father has sent me, so send I you. Are we going? Next. We're to make disciples. We're to make disciples. Look at your text again. He says, Go ye therefore and teach. Your translation may have made disciples. The word teach means made disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The word teach in the word study is defined as to be a disciple or follower of another's doctrine. And in this context, who is the person that we are going to follow? Mm -hmm. Who is the person that we're going to try to emulate and be like? Who is it? Jesus. It's Jesus. And he says not only to learn, but to become attached to one's teacher, Jesus, and to become his follower in doctrine and in conduct. A New Testament disciple has been given. Once you're saved, you have, you have been given the passion and the desire to be like Jesus. But you also have been given the power to become like Jesus. Amen. Not just to have the desire and the passion to be like Jesus, but the power through the Holy Spirit to be like Jesus. Amen? Amen. We have been given the power to experience a complete transformation. You remember 2 Corinthians 5, 17 that says, If any man is in Christ, he's a new what? Creation. He's a new creation. He becomes a new creature, a new creation in Jesus Christ. His sins are forgiven. He is justified, declared righteous in the sight of God because of what Jesus did for him on the cross. And if that person receives Jesus in their heart and their life, they're justified. They become a new creation. That's instantaneous. The penalty of your sin is paid for. But what does the rest of the verse say? If any man is in Christ, he becomes a what? A new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. That is the process of growing and maturing in Christ. The Bible calls it sanctification. But the point being that the gospel, when we receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is a complete transformation. We get the whole thing. Be like him, have the power to be like him. Amen? Amen? Now, a question that we need to ask ourselves in becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ and having a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's more than up here in your head. You've got to receive Jesus in your heart. You've got to have that relationship with him. But what is the first step in becoming a disciple? You've got to be saved. The first step in becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ is we have to be saved. Say, so how do we do that? I'm glad you asked that. Here's a prayer of salvation. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. Do you understand that you are a sinner? 
The Bible says that all of us have sinned. All of us, including the preacher. Including me. Sometimes especially me. <laughs> all of us have sinned and come short of what God demands and expects. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that is against God's word and God's will. Man, I've sinned a bunch. I've sinned a ton. We're all sinners. Do I realize that? And when the Lord begins to call you unto himself, the weight of your sin will become heavier and heavier and heavier because you have the knowledge that you are separated from God. You're on the wrong side of this thing. And your sin is against God. And the penalty and the weight of your sin is upon you. It is tangible. You feel it. Many times people, they get in all kinds of bondage. And their flesh, your flesh has the power to make you a slave and make you miserable. The power of sin. I know that I am sinful and I need forgiveness. Second, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose again. Hallelujah. I believe in God's Christ. I believe that Jesus is the one who died for me. And I believe he rose from that grave in resurrection power to set me free. Three, I am willing to turn from my sin and myself and follow you instead. That's repentance. I'm willing to turn from my way of doing things, my thinking, and I'm willing to turn to the Lord and follow him as much as I know how. <coughs> Three elements right here. Repentance, turning from yourself and your sin. Faith in what Jesus did for me on the cross to save me and through the power of the resurrection. Surrender. I am willing to come to an altar or some place and humble myself before the Lord and ask Him to forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart and my life and clean me up and give me a clean heart like these kids are talking about. And be saved and born again. Instantly you will be forgiven. Your sin debt will be paid for through what Christ did for you on the cross. Instantly you will be delivered from the penalty of sin. And then you start that process of being delivered from the grip, the power, the force of your sin as you learn to walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But the rub comes, are we willing to humble ourselves? And pray this prayer. We have prayer cards down here in the basket to guide people in their prayers. But it's the heart. Amen. Amen. How many of you understand out there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah? <laughs> All right. So the first step in being, becoming a disciple is being saved, being born again. It's another term the New Testament uses. Now, years ago there was a ministry called Promise Keepers. And many of us went to the Promise Keepers together, went to stadiums, we went to the Thunderdome in Tampa, we went to the TD Waterhouse Center, went to the Mercedes Center in Atlanta, over 40, 50,000 men worshiping God together, and the gospel being preached, and tons of people being saved, men being saved. They had uh, small groups that they call uh, point, uh, or small groups, and they had men called Promise Keepers Point Man Training. And this is what they discovered in their point man training. Ten percent of people will change when they hear the truth. Ten percent will never change if Jesus is standing right before them and wooing them that, that they never change. Because some people just like that. Eighty percent will only change in the context of relationship. What did they discover? They discovered New Testament Christianity. Honey, you don't get saved unless you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't get your sins forgiven unless you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't get delivered from the power, the grip, and the force of sin until you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. New Testament Christianity is not a fire insurance policy against hell. It's a relationship with God's Son, Jesus Christ. I talk to him every day and he talks to me. Amen? Amen? We're not called to make church members. That's right. Our commission is to make disciples who are in a real relationship with Jesus, learning and growing, struggling at times, yes, but overcoming the power and the grip of force of sin and learning to walk in victory in Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, 
We are called, commissioned to go forth. We are called to make disciples. Third, we are called to teach truth. To teach truth. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things. This is Jesus. Teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world or end of the age. Amen. We are commanded to teach the words of Jesus. We're commanded to teach the scriptures. That's what we're to teach. We're to share that with others. Why are we to share the words of Jesus and the words of Scripture? Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free. The truth of who you are before God. The truth about your sin and your sinful life. The truth about the fact that you need to confess and ask the Lord to forgive you and to come into your heart and your life. The truth that salvation is a relationship Amen. with Jesus. Amen? Amen? Jesus makes statements. He makes seven great I am statements. He said, I am the bread of life. He that believeth and receive me shall never hunger. You know, we have a God-sized hole in our life. We have a void that can only be filled with God's provision, Jesus Christ. And when we receive Jesus Christ, the bread of life, He will satisfy our spiritual hunger in the name of Jesus and give us peace with God. Amen? He said, I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me and receiveth me shall not walk in darkness. Oh, our old world is getting darker by the day. The spiritual deception, the spiritual darkness, the hatred, the upset, the anger, and so forth. I mean, you see that spiritual darkness everywhere. But as a believer, I don't have to receive that. I don't have to walk in that darkness. If I walk in the light as he is in the light, I have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses me from all and every sin. I don't have to receive that. Right. I walk in the light of Christ. Jesus said, I am the door to the sheepfold. In other words, the only way to get into the family of God is through Jesus. He says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Jesus died for our sins and rose again for our justification. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He said this, the sixth I am statement. I am the way. I am the truth, I am the life. No man goeth to heaven but by and through me. Powerful statement. I am the way. Without, without Jesus, there is no going. Without Jesus being the way, there is no going. Without the truth of Jesus, there is no knowing. Without the life of Jesus, there is no living. My spiritual life only comes through a real saving relationship with Jesus. My forgiveness comes through that same relationship. I cannot experience deliverance from anything apart from my life in Christ. Amen? Amen. So, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said in the seventh I am statement, I am the vine, you are the branches. Talking to believers, talking to his disciples. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me you can do nothing. What does he say? All spiritual life comes through Jesus. All my spiritual sustenance comes through my surrendered life in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And we are called on to teach truth. Why? Because it is the truth that sets us free. Many people are living on partial truths, half-truths, and lies, and they are bound into bondage. <clears throat> Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly and to set us free. Amen? Our marching orders to go forth, to make disciples, and to teach truth. Are you and I doing that? As the Father has sent me, Jesus said, so send I you, and so he is sending us out. Imagine this. 
let's imagine that Jesus ascends back to heaven. And when he gets there, he's surrounded by all of these angels. And let's imagine they ask him this question. Did you finish the Father's mission? What would Jesus say to that, that question? Did he finish the work that the Father sent him to do? Absolutely. Let's imagine that the angels ask him this question. Well, does everybody in the world know about the Father's love? Does ever, has everybody in the world heard about the Father's provision in Jesus Christ, the gospel? And what would Jesus say to that? He'd say, no, everybody hadn't heard. But I have left my followers in charge of that mission. I have left them in charge of the mission of going forth, making disciples, and teaching truth. That is their responsibility. I've delegated power and authority to them. I'm the head. They are the body. It is their responsibility to go forth and fulfill my mission. The angels look at each other, and then they look at Jesus, and they ask, what's plan B? <laughs> there is no plan B. We're the plan. You and me who claim Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are the plan. Are we going forth? Are we teaching truth? Are we making disciples? I haven't been called, been called to go to Africa. Have you? Have you been called to go to Australia as a missionary? There's a lot of people who receive a call of God upon their life to go all over the world with the gospel. The group that we're a part of denominationally have like eight or 9,000 missionaries. We have missionaries everywhere. God has not called us to go. He's called us to support them, but he has called us to go to our families, to our relatives, to our neighbors, our friends, our acquaintances. Has he not? Yes. Yes. The pandemic has turned us inward. But the Great Commission turns us outward. We need to reach out. Whenever and as often as we can. There's opportunities all around us. And we need to be sharing the power of the gospel to save people from their sin. But also deliver them from the power and the grip and force of sin in their lives. Amen? Amen? I confess, I need to rededicate my life in this area. This pandemic has just upset everything and got us out of joint. And we need to get back <clears throat> to going and ministering. You may need to rededicate your life this morning as well as a believer. You may be here this morning and you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. You say, how do I know if I'm ready? Glad you asked that. Do you know that you're sinful and you need forgiveness? Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose again? Are you willing to turn from your sin and yourself as much as you know how and ask Jesus to come into your heart and your life and save you and forgive you? Are you willing to humble yourself and come to Jesus? Well, if you are, you'll be saved. I'm here at the front to help you. We have prayer cards. My wife is down front. We'll be willing to help you with that. But that's your decision. We're not asking you to become a church member. We're asking you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, okay? We're here to help you. Let's bow before the Lord.